Good morning. <clears throat> Today is Saturday, June 24th, 2023. This is our regular Saturday morning yoga therapy class. We wish to do this in uh, person, but after the pandemic, we went virtual and we're continuing virtual now. So let me check the sound to be sure everything is all right. Check, 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 sound. Check, check, sound. Okay, I think we are all good. <clears throat> and uh, It's almost 9.30. So today's topic is a request. And as I said, that all of our presentations are based on our experience from our teaching and from sharing with all the people who are benefited with our yoga therapy session. Today's session is a request. One of our friends requested that she has a hand pain and want to do a yoga therapy for hand pain and hand health. So as usual, as we start every day, we start with called pathophysiology means what is the physiology what is pathology behind the hand pain hand is a very complex organ okay first of all let me tell you that <clears throat> our motor cortex the brain is almost one third of the cortex is controlling your hand. And hand is so complex that we have a separate specialty in our medical field. Hand specialty, hand surgeons, the surgeons only do operation on hands. So if you look at the hand first, there is a lot of bones and we have five fingers. So each finger in a hand have a three bones called phalanges. You can see you can bend here, here, here. Three bones and three joints. So three phalanges times four will be 12. And thumb has a two phalanges. So we have 14 phalanges and the 14 bones with 14 joints. One, two, three joints times four, one, two, 14 joints. You can think about how complex the hand is. Then connecting the phalanges are the five called meta carpal bones, three, four, five. This metacarpal, carpal basically is a wrist, metacarpal bone comes and joins in your wrist. Wrist is more complicated. Wrist has about, uh, wrist has about eight small bones. And during our anatomy class, we used to memorize them. Scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamet. I still remember those, you know, we have memorized, we used to memorize and the, our professor used to ask the eight. 
wrist bones. Then it connects to the main two bones of the forearm called radius and ulna. Radius and ulna comes high up. It connects to the your humerus and then it goes to the shoulder joint, the back. So the hand is connected and very complicated your anatomy and physiology. So movement to moving this joints, you have the muscles and the muscles comes to the hand. There are some small muscles in the hand called tenor muscles, hypotenor muscles, but most of them converts into a tendon. Tendon is the, the long fibrous end of the muscles and they go through a sheet called a covering and those called a synovial sheet and those synovial sheet gives your lubrication to this tendons. So the tendons are moving, the hands are moving and the hand also has a, a normal anatomical features and function. Normal function of the hand is a grip like this. And generally what I do, I have a, let's see, I have a, a here it is, tennis ball. Tennis ball is exactly the size of the function of your hand. So properly functioning hand, what you will do, you put a tennis ball in your hand, then we'll breathe out first, take a deep breath in, breathing out, you'll give a squeeze into this tennis ball. Breathe in, breathe out. Do the other hand also, because of the two hands, Breathe in, sorry, breathe in and breathe out. Tennis ball is a perfect size for your hand health. So that all the functions will see and what causes the pain will come back a little later and then how we can overcome them. So let's come back. We are an integrative medicine physician. What does, you know, yoga anatomy tells us about hand? Hand is a connector between your body and mind. Anything you think, your hands will be first before you can talk. Like if you like something, you will say this before you say, hey, it's good. You want something, you put your hand, he said, before you put your hand, he said, hey, give it to me. So it's a neurophysical connector. It also represents the five elements of the universe and our whole body. In yogic tradition, there is, sorry, what happened? In yogic tradition, there is no Big Bang Theory. The origin of the universe, the first there was a space, in the space came air, air had a friction, caused fire, fire melted the cloud from water, water froze into earth. Space, air, fire, water, earth, we call it the five elements, Sanskrit called Pancha Mahabhuta, called Khiti, Op, Tej, Morut, Bom, and they represented also in the fingers. 
space is represented in your middle finger air is in the index finger fire is in the thumb water in the little finger and art in your ring finger and between the five elements we have three doshas called vata pitta and kapha vata is a component of your air and space in our body so the air <coughs> air is the your index finger and fire is your thumb so when you touch your index finger and thumb it literally quiets down and comes down your mind it also quiets down your pitta element because pitta is your perfectionist pitta is a anger you know pitta is and very aggressive it quiets down your pitta. this is to balance your pitta dosha if you put an index finger down and put a thumb this is called your vayu mudra mudras are the hand gestures it balances your vata elements by you. and vata is responsible for pain and you'll see during the practice i'm going to show it to you touching middle finger and thumb this is called your shunda mudra or it is improves your hearing because all the sound comes from your space ring finger and thumb is called a pretty bee mudra it balances your kapha, kapha dosha. The little finger and thumb called a varun mudra. The varun mudra balances the your urinary bladder and the water content of the body. So we'll show it to you, both yogic perspective and our <clears throat> modern medicine perspective of how to take care of hand health and hand pain and hand health the cause of the hand pain it's very obvious that we have so many joints the primary is arthritis arthritis is a you know i say sometimes hundreds of arthritis but primary arthritis is called degenerative osteoarthritis that means we are getting younger. We don't get any older anymore, younger. Our, this, uh, all the bones, joints, they start getting your degenerative and deterioration, cartilage is gone, and then they start having pain. Pain is not due to that your cartilage is damaged, your bone is damaged. When cartilage and bone is damaged, your body does a splinting. It tightens up your ligaments, tightens up your muscles and tendons. So the therapy here is a relaxation response. More you relax your hand, you'll get rid of the pain. And we'll show it to you how to relax your hand. Rheumatoid arthritis. It's another very a common, we call it a juvenile arthritis, which happens in the younger age group. They also affect your hand. And sometimes the arthritis is so severe in the hands, it causes deformity of the hand. Next, the common one is called a carpal tunnel syndrome. A carpal tunnel syndrome, there's a nerve called a median nerve. When the median nerve comes through your wrist here, there is a ligament and it goes under the ligament, goes to the supply primary to the, your thumb side, call your tenor and the hypotenor eminences with all the muscles here. That nerve, gets a little compressed with the tightness of the ligament and 
it causes pain and discomfort primarily on the thinner side and also in advanced age it also causes the atrophy of the muscles the muscles starts to flatten instead of being raised the muscle gets slowly and slowly weak carpal tunnel syndrome is also happens during body has developed some swelling during the part of the swelling and edema it tightens up next is your sometimes i've seen a fracture of these fingers there are so many fingers so many bones they have a a non-displaced fracture or you call a crack fracture which is not obvious you know displaced fracture compound fracture communicated fracture those are very obvious even in the hand but sometimes a very subtle crack in one of the bones causes pain tenosynovitis <clears throat> tendon and your sheet which is covering synovial sheet they develop inflammation become tightness and causes pain during movement of your fingers one of them is called stenosing tenosynovitis big name stenosing means tightness and tenosynovitis means inflammation of the tendon synovial sheet and it causes a phenomena called a triggered finger i have one and i work with it all the time so many a time i don't have it but you may feel or you may see my this tendon is tight this is tight it is you can you can see it my this tendon is not that tight so my this finger my left middle finger as a a trigger so a trigger finger will be like this so my finger is bent i cannot make it extend it i have to push a little bit to extend it it called a trigger so the trigger it will trigger come down and then you can see it comes down then it takes a little trigger trigger finger this is painful but when you are using your hand when you are using this tennis ball you are very functional even with your trigger finger ah uh, what else yes tennis and duputrans contracture duputran contracture is a tightness of the tissue underneath your skin and generally it involves primarily fourth and fifth finger and your hands will be in a flexion deformity flexion deformity and if you put a hand on a on a <clears throat> say on a table we call it a tabletop test like if you put in the tabletop uh Let's see okay so if it is a table top and you put your hand the hand fingers will be up like this they will never touch they will not touch the table top so do the table top test for the duputrans contracture so <clears throat> primary therapy in yoga is relaxation response who is most relaxed babies we learn yoga therapy from the babies every movement of the baby 
is a yoga asana and yoga pose. So, baby's hand. If you look at a baby's hand, it is called Balo Mushti Mudra. Baby will close the hand with thumb inside and close. They do not close the hand like this. Thumb inside and close. Practice this every single day. Any kind of hand pain, any kind of hand discomfort will go away. Money back guarantee. Adhi mudra, balo mushti mudra, with this mudra opens up in the upper part of your lung and is a very functional relaxation of your hand. When your hands are relaxed, you'll see your fingers are all separated. You know, you'll put your hand, the, the fingers will go like this. But when the hands are tight, it will go there. So you also need to practice with your breathing. Why? Lung is like a balloon. It has six liter capacity. It needs one and a half liter to keep it open. It has a four and a half liter which you can exchange the air, which is called vital capacity. And we only breathe in a normal breathing volume called tidal volume, only half a liter. So if you first we learn how to breathe out, if you breathe out completely effortlessly, and then take a deep breath in slowly, completely effortlessly, breathe out longer than breathing in. Oxygen comes in, Oxygen is a powerful relaxer of your muscles. Remember, we have a back pain, we put a heating pad. The heating pad opens up your blood vessels called vasodilatation. It brings more oxygen in. And oxygen is, relaxes your muscles. Exhalation is parasympathetic. Inhalation is sympathetic. So by longer exhalation, you get a parasympathetic response. With a relaxation response, you get a parasympathetic activation and you'll be like me. Now I have been talking to you for a while. My mouth is entirely wet. My mouth is wet. So what you are going to do is you put your hand here and you will do with your breathing. You breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Breathing out, you do Adhi Mudra. Do with your eyes closed. Breathe in. Breathe in, breathe out. Wrist is connected to your hand. So when wrist gets relaxed, your hand gets relaxed. The wrist gets relaxed with extension. Extension, breathe out first. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. This is your tightness of the wrist, is flexion. Extension, breathe in, breathe out. Another nice way to do it will be your 
uh, lot of asanas we have. We'll show you those asanas where you can use your as a wrist extension, but uh, you will uh, you will do a hand against resistance, like uh, yeah. If you can do, you can do like uh, you can put your hand against a wall and extend. I mean, you cannot see it from there, so I don't have any wall here, but like here, you'll put your hand against the wall, keep your arms straight, breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and push in the wall, and hold it, and do the breathing again. Keep pressing on the wall, and Breathe in, breathe out longer than breathing in. You'll be able to use this hand extension in your, say, cobra pose, bhujangasan, uh, downward facing dog, like adho mukha swanasan, then also the regular yogic push-ups. Done, done by tech, push-ups. Also, when you do this, turn your hand like this and then push it against the wall. So if you sit here, you'll be pushing your hand like this and push it against the wall. Same way, you'll keep your hand against the wall and same breathing technique, breathing out longer than breathing in. So Adhi Mudra, Adhi Mudra, baby fist and wrist extension. And you heard what I said? Money back guarantee. No question about it. Okay. One very important aspect of our <clears throat> upper extremity is they're so interconnected that if you don't have a proper posture, you may develop pain in the hand. Personally, I had experience, I had an orthopedic surgeon. He had a carpal tunnel syndrome. He himself is a yoga practitioner. and he's doing all the yogic asanas for the hand pain, it's not being improved. But when you saw him, he had a, a little hunchback, his posture was not, his spine was not straight. So I simply ask, ask him to go against the wall, put your body straight, close your eyes, Keep your spine straight. Breathing out longer than breathing in. Raising the hand high up. And the same way, keep our posture straight. Merudanda Chal, spine straight. Then we started teaching Pashim Namaskar, prayer pose to the back. And what it does, from the wrist you come to the elbow, in the elbow, the outside called external rotation causes a pain and internal rotation relieves the pain. And also remember, we use our 
your health parameters with our the monitoring device with practicing our yoga asanas pranayamas meditate everything so if you can do an internal rotation of the elbow and cause the extension of your wrist you will improve your hand health and hand function and get rid of your hand pain this is good this is good this is prayer pose you can extend your wrist it's a very nice asana but if you do a prayer pose to the back called Pashim Namaskar you put your hand yeah, you can see, you can see me put your hands together and remember in stages you do if you if you cannot come here if you're here stay here continue your breathing within few days or few weeks to the input you will develop neuroplasticity and it will come up to here slowly you will be getting into your prayer pose Pashim Namaskar staying here slowly hands will go high up and we stay in this asana as if this is our normal posture in fact with this asana standing or sitting i will do my neck relaxation like a brahma mudra breathe in breathe out i will do a side to side look back slowly rotate your neck breathe in breathe out so it is so comforting so relaxing that you can sit down and continue this and hand health will be better and better hand pain will go away because pain is due to tightness also <clears throat> in our yogic tradition the bastrika pranayama the bellows bellows improves your pain you know, the pain it's better in fact a, a, a therapeutic component of your Vastrika pranayama is the relief of your pain. So we can continue with our Adhi Mudra, like putting a thumb inside and close, and with the Vastrika pranayama with the hand raised. So if you see if you see when your hand is raised the hand will be your five fingers five fingers are open when you come down you will do the adhi mudra active inhalation active exhalation as you know we should it all the time we do it in a very slow speed medium speed and a fast speed so let me show you some a slow 
speed, bastrika pranayama, wheat adhimudra to get rid of your hand pain. Remember, just able to do this every single day with your breathing. No question about it. But it takes time. I have a friend, he had his hand pain, so he was tired of taking pain medication. He said, I said, keep doing the Adhi Mudra. And he was religious, he was doing it. No question about it. I know him personally. But after two, three, four weeks, I said, hey, it's not going away. I still have the hand pain. I said, okay, you tried, didn't work. Go back to your pain pills. Oh no, I don't want to take those pills that causes so much of side effects. So continue doing it. It took a long time, around five or six weeks time. After six weeks, he comes and says, hey, it's getting better. I don't have much. So it will be like this. So you breathe out first, take a deep breath in. You do active inhalation. So when you pull it down, you put the thumb inside and close. Okay, doing with me, let's do it. Let's do it about say 15, 20 times and see how you feel. And do it to the eyes closed. It's a wonderful practice. It is your Bastrika Pranayama on a Adhibuddha. Just one second. So we do pranayama every, uh, sorry, we do jalneti. We wash our nose every morning. That's our daily dinocharya. And during this bastrika pranayama, we do have some drainage because some water, very little water does stay inside your sinuses. You can also do this Bastrika pranayama without raising your hand. Somebody always comes to me and said, Oh, I have a problem raising my hand. I have this. This okay. So do the Adhi Mudra, come inside and close, put it over your knees. Always sit down with your spine straight and do a Bastrika pranayama without. without raising your hand high up. So it will be like this. So if you're going to do with me, please continue Adhi Mudra on the knee and Vastrika Pranayama.
wonderful experience. And as long as it's done without any effort, it should be fine. Vayu mudra, putting thumb down and putting index finger down thumb, it balances your vata. Vata is responsible for your pain. So what we do, we do the vayu mudra in one hand, like left hand, put over the knees, and we'll do the alternate nostril breathing. Onulom vilom pranayama. Onulom vilom pranayama is also called a vayu pradhan pranayama. That means it balances your vata. It balances your both side of the brain. Vata is very mobile. Vata is very active. Vata is dry. Vata is light. But vata primary imbalances are mobile. Mobile in the thought process. Mobile in the physical activities. So close your right nostril with the right thumb. Breathe out through your left nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril and breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Close your right nostril and breathe out through your left nostril. Then with the Vayu Mudra, continue your alternate nostril breathing. Left nostril is controlled by the right brain. Right brain is intuitive. Right brain is female. Right brain is cooling. Right brain is parasympathetic. So left nostril breathing is cooling, coming. It's called Chandra Nari, moon energy. Also it is coming, cooling, so it's a parasympathetic. Right nostril is controlled by the left brain. Left brain is analytical. Left brain is mailed. Left brain is hitting. Left brain is sympathetic. Right nostril breathing is called a suranari, sun energy. It is sympathetic. You continue as long as you don't have any effort in breathing. Remember, when they also when the hand has underlying the stenosing tenosynovitis, which is called a trigger finger, or your duputrans contracture, or decoverant tendinitis, it is always the the flat hand and the extended wrist which helps you to get rid of the head pain. Gomukhasan, cow face, Gomukhasan is another one, another asan, which is very effective to relieving the hand pain. And there's a Brahmri Pranayam. So in traditional yoga practice, you have an eight limbs yoga, in eight limbs, is a yam, niyam, uh, 
social restraint, personal is asan pranayam pratahara dharan dhan samadhi. That means your asan practice comes first, which is called your sthiram sukham asanam. Then comes pranayama. Then it comes your pratahara, controlling of your senses. Then dharan, focus, dhan meditation. In a therapeutic yoga, it is the adaptation of the yoga practice based on the patient's clinical condition. So we mismatch. We use your asana, pranayama, meditation together, or you do our pranayama first, maybe meditation first, based on the patient's clinical condition. So in a Brahmri Pranayama, you can do with your Shanmukhi Mudra or you can put your two index finger in the forehead, use your three fingers to close your eyes, close your ear with your thumb and close your mouth. Shut down your five senses. Then you create a vibration, like a sound of a bumblebee. Your brain has a vibration, two vibration interacts, cancels each other, it's called harmonic resonance. So breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. One more time. Breathe out first. Then do pumping and cupping for the primary relaxation. Rub your thumbs, rub your thumbs. If you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses. Use the hand like a cup. Put it over your eyes. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. It relaxes your ciliary muscles. Makes your lens more convex. You don't need a reading glasses. When eyes are relaxed, your brain is relaxed. Massage your forehead. All the muscles are here attached to your skin. So all the wrinkle goes away. All the frowning line goes away. Massage the, all the face the same way. All the muscles are attached to the skin. So the wrinkle goes away. Take your hand massage back of your ear, ear lobe inside your external auditory canal. This is called a branch of your vagus nerve called auricular branch. It's a vagal activation, which is parasympathetic. Take your hand, massage your carotid sinuses. Activation of carotid sinuses comes down your cardiovascular system, nervous system. Take your hand to the back and massages your occipital tubercle. The two muscles are attached, sternomastoid muscle, trapezius muscle, which are supplied by the cranial nerve. Let's show some, you know, these asanas, but to show it to you how it will affect your hand health and get rid of your hand pain.
Sitting down, you can do your Pushchim Namaskar. Put your hands to the back and do a Namaskar Mudra. And your hands are in extension with the relaxation of the wrist and forearm in internal rotation, the relaxation of your elbows. As you can see, a gomukhasan or a cow face will be a, another asan to improve your hand function and also the gomukhasan you get a relaxation of your whole body and mind for sit down in a vaisasan vaisa means your buffalo buffaloes cows they sit down like this till metaphorically this looks like a face of a cow Right knee is at the top, right hand goes high up. Maybe let me show you from the back so you'll be able to see better. My right knee is in the top, my right hand is up. Bring the left hand. bring it very close to the midline right hand comes down it touches it hooks and slowly and slowly you will be able to even handshake each other and able to stay in this asana and effortless breathing means you can talk, you can sing, and you stay here between five to ten breaths. Wonderful asana to bring your hand health back. Balance it. Do it in both sides. Now is my left knee is in the top. Left hand goes high up. I bring my right hand. I slowly bring my right hand to the middle. Left hand comes down. I hook it and slowly close it together and you stay in the pose longer and longer you stay more and more relaxed you will feel So on the mat, you'll be able to do these asanas, which you can put your wrist, like, you know, putting your hand, whole hand in the wrist is absolutely touching the ground. You know, even when you put your hand in down so let me show it to you for the relaxation and relaxation both the hands will fall like this all the toe fingers are separated same way in the yogis all of the toes are separated same way when you're doing say savasana 
corpse pose. Your hands will also, both thumb and the little finger and all the fingers will touch the ground. Try it, see what happens with your hand. Relaxation, so you're feeling your hands, like mudras, when you do mudra, they said hanu mudra or gyanu mudra, touching the index finger or the thumb, it is a neurophysical connector to take the prana to the organ of healing, called pranic healing. Say, Bhujanga Asan, Cobra pose. You'll see it is not Bhujanga Asan, it is the position of your hand. Or also like this, you know, you are you're doing a Marjara Asan, Cat pose. See, you're, you get a one hand here. This is your tabletop, and look at the hand. Wrist is flexed, all the fingers are separated. We're doing in, breathe out. You'll get into your chin towards your chest and you stay in this posture. In yoga therapy, you stay in the asana at least five to 10 breaths. When you are learning the Yoga asanas, you get in and out. So hands are on the side. If you want to do the cobra pose, you know, slowly getting up. Take a deep breath in and you try to look high up in the back. But look at your hand. Hand is your extended and hand is your... It's a hand which is very important. So Bhujangasana, which improves your hand function. You can do Adhumukhaswanasan, downward facing dog. It's the same thing. Look at your hands. The wrist is extended and separated. You can do simple push ups and come back in the same way. Or just a simple push ups. Go down. Go high up. See that? What's the function of your hand? Go down. <sighs> Wonderful practice to improve your hand health, hand function, and get rid of your hand pain. So summarizing again, hand is very complicated organ. One third of a half of your brain controls your hand. You should see the picture, the homunculus, the brain controlling the body. One fourth brain is your hand. One fourth is a head and neck, and the rest of the body is very small. Fourteen phalanges, small fingers, five metacarpal bones in each hand, and each wrist has eight small bones. 
and we memorize scaphoid, lunet, triquetrum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitet, hamet. It has a rhythm, it's almost like a poem. It's wonderful. A lot of tendons, a lot of sheets, a lot of muscles, a lot of causes, arthritis, carpal tunnel syndrome, mild non displaced fractures, tenosynovitis, sclerosing tenosynovitis, like my finger, it is called your trigger finger, it will trigger. One finger goes high up suddenly. Another entity also called a ganglion. Yes, the ganglion also causes a hand pain. So ganglion are the, it's a, in, the, in the joint, mostly it is in the wrist, but also in your interphalangeal joint. You will see in this finger here, you'll see a small bump here which if you keep pressing on them and close your eyes and do the breathing, slowly and slowly goes in, especially in the wrist. This generally happens here. I do have a small ganglion, but with my yogic practice, it is no longer there, but most of the people will have a surgery done, the surgery for the ganglion of the wrist so i will put a pressure here on my ganglion i'll sit down close my eyes breathing out longer than breathing in okay daily practice baby fist adhi mudra with your breathing breathe in breathe out extension of your wrist and this is tightening this is relaxing with your breathing breathe in breathe out you can do it in the tabletop you can do it on your mat so the pujangasan downward facing dog other mukhaswanasan are simple push-ups to keep this hand in balanced. Thank you for joining. Oh, the pranayamas. You have the Bastrika pranayama with the Adi Mudra. You get a wonderful practice. No? Or Adi Mudra. What more do you need? And if you ask me, say Karo Yog Rohaniro. Do yoga, stay disease free, and stay healthy. And all of our people who has been doing it, they're very healthy in their hand health and got rid of hand pain. Alternate nostril breathing with a Vayu Mudra. Vayu Mudra is putting your Index finger down, that quiets down your vata. Vata is a root cause of your pain. And alternate nostril breathing is also vata balancing. Brahmri pranayama, quiet down your mind to get rid of your chronic pain. And it's almost a, a meditative experience. Thank you for participating. Next week, I would be in Atlantic City next Saturday. I have two presentations. This is a, a annual conference called North American Bengali Conference. There will be a medical seminar with a continuing medical education, CME. Uh, my presentation will be yoga therapy for prevention of cardiovascular disease. This will be a formal PowerPoint presentation. Then another day, I will have a, a yoga therapy practice, yoga therapy for health and healing. So no 
Facebook Live class in next Saturday. Then I'll be back on two weeks from today on Saturday. Okay, please make a comment or questions in the Facebook. I will be glad to answer for you.